Did you know that in ancient times, people used the position of stars to guide them to travel from one place to another? Later, we started using magnetic compasses to understand the directions. What about now? Do you use a magnetic compass to go anywhere? No, right? We have GPS now. This has made our life so easy. We can get directions instantly. But how does that GPS work? What about telecommunications like TVs, phones, etc? What about weather reports? All of these have something in common. They all get signals from satellites to work. Satellites. Does the word ring a bell? Yes. Moon is our natural satellite. It orbits around the Earth. In the same way, there are man-made satellites that orbit around the Earth in a particular path. These are called artificial satellites. Let's dig deep into this. There are around 1100 artificial satellites orbiting the Earth. How do these artificial satellites get up there and how do they stay in orbit? Let me just give you an example to understand this better. What if I throw a stone from here? Because of the force of attraction from Earth, it travels some distance and falls on the ground, right? What if I throw the stone harder? It travels a longer distance before falling on the ground. That means it is orbiting the Earth for some time before falling to the ground. We know that Earth is not flat. It is like a spherical ball. That means if the stone is thrown at a greater speed, it orbits around the Earth like this. Of course, this can only happen when there is no air drag. And outside the atmosphere, there is no air to have any air drag. This sounds interesting, right? Isaac Newton is the first person to tell us how to get satellites to stay in their orbit. We send each one up on a rocket, which is the launch vehicle. It travels straight up for some time before it starts to tilt, which brings it nearly parallel to the Earth's surface. The tricky part is that once it is up there, it needs to find the balance between Earth's force of attraction and its speed because the Earth is pulling the satellite back and at the same time, it is moving forward in order to stay at the right place. But the satellite speed is very important. A proper speed creates a stable orbit or path based on the height of the satellite. So it is like a balancing game. A little confused? Let me explain it to you using a small activity. Imagine I am the Earth and this ball is a satellite. I am attaching the ball with a string. Now the ball starts moving and as Earth, I want to pull the satellite towards me. So the ball moves forward and I pull it back. Again it moves forward and I pull it back. In this way, it gets into a circular path. What if the ball moves too fast? I would not be able to pull it back. The ball gets detached and just flies off like this. What if the ball moves too slow? Obviously, it just falls down like this. We can conclude that if the satellite goes too fast, the Earth will not be able to pull it and the satellite will fly off into space. And if it is too slow, the Earth will pull it back and it will probably burn up in the atmosphere. So it needs to be at the right speed. Most artificial satellites fly in low Earth orbit which is between 150 and 20,000 kilometers. So if the satellite is about 300 kilometers away, it has to move around the Earth with a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. This is too fast, right? If they are over 1,000 kilometers up, they can be a little relaxed and move at a speed of 25,000 kilometers per hour. So we can say, as the height of the orbit increases, speed in the orbit decreases. And of course, it takes more time for the revolution. Again, there are hundreds of satellites up there sending a lot of information to us. 
The first ever artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, was launched by the Soviet Union on October 4th, 1957 to study the Earth's atmosphere. Within a few months, USA also launched its first satellite, the Explorer, on January 31st, 1958 to measure the radiation environment of the Earth's orbit. Since then, technology has progressed by leaps and bounds. Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, has become very famous today and it is in the news for all the right reasons. In early 2017, ISRO launched 104 satellites at one go. This is no small feat. Our relation with satellites started with Aryabhatta, the first satellite launched by India on April 19, 1975. Then there were Bhaskara, Rohini, Apple, Insit, etc. Another big achievement in recent times is the launch of Mars Orbiter Mission, or MOM, on November 5, 2013. This mission was the first in the world to successfully reach the orbit of Mars in its very first attempt. It is designed to understand the topography and atmosphere of Mars. In fact, this is the least expensive Mars mission till now with a budget of only 450 crores. We must be proud of our scientists for sure. Each of these satellites are sent into space to orbits for different purposes. They are useful in many ways. All our telecommunications like TV, radio, mobile phones, fax, etc. is possible because of these satellites. You must have seen these kinds of weather reports on TV or in newspapers. These are actually the pictures sent by artificial satellites. We have also sent satellites to study other heavenly bodies in space. MOM is one of them. We also made use of these satellites to locate minerals and to study the agricultural yield on Earth by photographing the land from above. And of course, our GPS system that we use to navigate and know the directions also depends on satellites. Well, we have explored many uses of artificial satellites. I hope you can explore more about each of these satellites on your own. For now, let's recap what we have learned today. Artificial satellites are human-built objects orbiting the Earth and other planets in the solar system. Satellites stay in the orbit by moving in the right speed, balancing the force of attraction of Earth. Most of the satellites stay in low Earth orbit, which is in the height of 150 to 20,000 kilometers. As the height of the orbit increases, the speed decreases and the time taken to orbit the Earth increases. Sputnik 1 is the first ever satellite launched by Russia. Aryabhatta is the first satellite launched by India. Satellites are used for different purposes in telecommunication, in weather forecast, to gather information about other objects in space, to locate minerals, and to study agricultural yield in remote sensing and navigation. Great! This is just amazing! We can't imagine the world without satellites these days. I wish you could also be a scientist one day and explore more uses of satellites or maybe launch one yourself. Until then, Stay curious, keep exploring because we need more explorers like you. <laughs>